gave birth to Harrison on January 5th. Crazy. I, my last day filming was December 15th. Wow. So 20 days right. before. Yeah. And um, there were some comments that I started getting on my Instagram. Congratulations. Just watch the video. Right. Congratulations. Right. Like, and I was like, Towards the end oh, of it, shit. though. Yeah, but that's yeah right the at end the end. But you knew you weren't going to be able to mm-hmm. hide. And there were a bunch of Collider people, too, that were like, Schnee got a boob job. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to One on One with me, Christian Harloff. This is my show. It's a long-form interview show. I just sit down and I shoot the, eh, whatever. We shoot the shit. We talk about whatever is going on in someone's life. I've had some really great guests so far. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not watching, then maybe you're listening. Maybe you're listening on Apple Podcasts. Make sure you rate and comment over there. Or maybe you're checking it out on the Podcast One app if you're Android users. Now, this was a very cool interview for me. I got to sit down with Sinead DeFries. Now, this was a, I told you guys in the beginning when I started this show that it wasn't gonna just be actors and directors and actresses. Although Sinead is an actress, but it, I, but she's familiar to you guys because of Collider Movie Talk. And I've known Sinead for a little bit since the AMC days, and we got to talk about everything, but the conversation just really went in a really honest place. Sinead talked about a lot of personal stuff and it was about her relationship, about her son, about things that I just didn't know at all and about being down on herself and just kind of having anxiety. And we really got into it and I give all the credit in the world to Sinead. She wasn't, she had no guard up. She just would, said what came to her mind and she was very honest and very open. So please enjoy the interview. It was great to have Sinead back in the studio. And once again, if you are not subscribed to this channel, please do that. But if uh, go to the Apple Podcast, subscribe, rate, and comment. Very important to do that. Help us get in the charts over there. And check out our other shows that we have as well. Movie Talk, Heroes, Jetta Council, all of them. They're all available for you to listen to the gym and, and wherever else it is. If you don't want to go to the gym, then listen to it in your car on the way passing by as you watch somebody at the gym. All right. Don't be creepy. Talk to you guys soon. Enjoy this interview. There's Sinead. There's me. We're talking right there. Here we go. All right. Welcome back to One on One with Christian Harloff. And I've had a couple really interesting guests over the last couple of weeks, and I didn't know them at all. I had never met, um, well, that's not Dan Fogler I had met before, but you know what I mean. I hadn't really had deeper conversations or worked with these people. And one of the people that I said that I was going to get on this show when I initially came up with the premise to put it not only back on Collider, but just to do it again. And when I was doing the Harloff podcast, I wanted to have this person on and she's sitting right next to me. So if you're watching video, you're like, why are you doing that? And when she's sitting, just say who it is. It's Sinead (laughs) DeFries. She is here. And Sinead, who I met, uh, we have a lot of different connections, but the, but the, I met you when we were doing AMC Movie Talk. Right. And so I am fascinated by you. Why me? I, yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated like by you. I'm like the least fascinating person ever. It's one of the reasons that I that I that I say that because you, you know I, I think I can't tell if you're full of shit when you say that I know. or not. A lot of people say that. A lot of people say that they can't tell if I'm full of shit. Right. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time. Has that been difficult in your life, or you love that? Um, it's difficult as a host. Mm-hmm. It's great as a person because. <laughs> Like as a person, it, it honestly, like my personality is very hard to judge off the bat. And I right. understand that now. And I would never have understood that if I wasn't in this business. You play with that now, though. Yeah, because it, it works. And also, like, I it helps me to find personalities that I can mesh with. Because if people can appreciate my sarcasm. Right. And also, most of the time, I'm not actually being sarcastic. Most right. of the time, it's just my kind of attitude. If people mesh with that and vibe with that, and they have a really great sense of humor, then that's a friend for life. Right. Like, know? it makes or breaks personality. Absolutely. Uh, relationships. Well, yeah, friendships. Yeah, right. So I mean, because I, well, one of the people I think right away is Ashley Mova. Yeah. Because like you guys, you guys kind of hit it off. Because I always thought you guys were like friends like forever, and you guys right. just met through this space, right? We met. Um, uh, Campia actually put us together for the Pretty Little Liars after show. Oh, that's how you guys met in that's the first we place. Met. Yeah, oh. we met the day before our very first show. Okay. But yeah, and it's like someone like Ashley. Like obviously, we don't work together as much anymore. But she's one of those people, like I just said when I walked in here, no matter how much time passes, I always feel like I just saw you guys. Right. That's the same with Mova, too. Yeah, I mean, you guys were like um, freaking frack every time I came in here <laughs> and talking. But I mean, that, we're going to get into all that. I want to learn about, first of all, how you, from from growing up in South Africa and then coming over here and then getting the job, like kind of hosting and, and the progression. And then you're kind of blowing up right now. And I would see you're like an Instagram model, too, at this point, right? <laughs> is, that, is that one of the uh, things you've been doing? I mean, I don't want, I don't like the term 
term like influencer. I think it's such a it's a, such an awful term. Right. Like fake news, right? I hate when people say fake news anymore. I'm just right. like stop saying that. It's it's done. Influencer too. I want it to be done because I do treat Instagram like a job. Like it is. You like really a job. do. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. I, it takes time. It takes effort. It takes money. Like when I was doing my taxes and I was looking at how much money I spent to create content. And I was like, right. oh my gosh. Like I really, it really is a job. Instagram to you is kind of like what YouTube was for Mark and myself. Right. Because you, I mean, Instagram is, it's for the kids. Exactly. And I, but, but like you, like again, you, it's like straight up like professional shoots when you're doing it. It's not yeah. just like what goes into thoughts. Like so it's not like you're just like sitting around. You're you're mm-hmm. like I'm by the pool. It's like oh, take a picture of me for Instagram. Right. You you go. There's like oh, planning. Oh yeah. So right? I like I have like a Google document that Damn. I list all the brands that I have collaborations with, and then next to each brand has like a due date, and then notes from that brand, and then my own ideas, props, wardrobe, and everything right. else that I need. Um, my boyfriend Harrison's dad. He decided one day. He's a he's in great of design so Mm -hmm. he is a creative director for like a huge events company and he's always been super creative he's been doing this for forever and one day he's like you know what I'm just gonna get a camera like I kind of feel like he used to do photography when he was like 16 he's like I'm just gonna get a camera see what happens Um, and then we shot pictures the first day he got his camera we took some of the my favorite pictures I think I've ever taken in my life and and he's cool with all that stuff too I mean he doesn't like he doesn't like comments right he well, doesn't like creepos right and randos who like you gotta get into a different business ask me yesterday i got a comment that was like you want you trying to get pregnant again question mark like uh, he doesn't like that kind of stuff right but i mean but uh, is he but getting he, used to it at this point no, no i don't think there's any way to get used to somebody asking you to like meet up with them or be your sugar daddy no. or i don't think you ever get used you to can't that. get used to it but i mean there is a, i mean i i guess i don't even pay attention to comments but it's yeah. very it's very different from what you're talking about to what i have to go through but i mean for him i mean i can't even imagine like you know all this stuff because like you said you you, you take the, the pictures that you, you that whether it's you're you're taking pictures on instagram or whether you're just reading news on a movie news right, show right. there's people who are just saying like oh my pants off right now yeah and all the time it, right and you and you <laughs> and you're like and then you think like you think like me in reality like I am a little blip in the in this business right I can't even imagine what other people go through like sometimes I stop like and Jennifer I think, Lawrence right yeah, yeah. And I just stop and I think I'm like oh my gosh like can, I think it's gross when people and it's it's fine like it honestly I'm very I'm not offended by a lot of things right. which most of the time gets me into trouble because I'm not very outspoken about a lot of things that people are very offended about but sure. I've always been that way where I just I just like see things and I'm just like I I don't have the patience to deal with it. And this. people take that as you not caring not but it's caring. just like what I have other things I'm worrying about right now. And I just feel like it's like life is too short. You right. can't be off- being offended is a personal choice. So I would choose to be offended by something that somebody said. Right. Like it's what what they can say could have been offensive, sure. But that's that's fact, right? Somebody says something offensive. Whether I am offended is my own choice. Sure. If I want to spend my day being pissed because some nasty jabroni said something gross about me right. or something hateful about my kid or about my boyfriend, then I would be fucking miserable right. all the time. And your boyfriend's the one who gets more upset at it than you do. He doesn't even get upset. He just doesn't like he doesn't like to deal with it. Right. You know. But like I guess in that sense he's used to it because That's kinda what I meant. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I don't I don't know if you ever fully get used to it. No, because you don't ever want someone talking I mean, as a as a dude in general, you don't want you don't want somebody talking about your lady or, no. or especially about your kid. About and, a kid is yeah, the worst. Yeah. Right. So and, and that fact that anyone would do that in general, that's kinda I try to keep I mean, and I don't judge anybody who doesn't, but I, I try to keep my kids all off of the internet because yeah. of that because yeah. I don't want to I know myself and what I would do so the question is so is your boyfriend is he a jealous dude in, in general would you say no I wouldn't no? say jealous I wouldn't say jealous yeah. um because that almost is like when you're jealous you find fault with things mm-hmm. um but no cautious he's, he's cautious mm-hmm. and he's protective okay um and he's he's English. He's kind of an ass. I didn't know that he was English. Yeah, he's English as oh, wow. hell. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, British AF, if okay. you will. But no, right. he he is kind of an ass. But I okay. mean, I like that about him. You know. Well, how so? Surprisingly what? enough, I like you assholes. like attitude. You like yeah. attitude. Is he an asshole though, or he just has attitude? There's a difference. Asshole means it, it I comes. I think he has an attitude. I kind of just think he's an ass. But he's, okay. but like rightfully so, you know, like okay. he he's the type of person that you want in your corner. Right. So he's an asshole to other people, not to you. 
No. Right. But like, he's not even, he's not an asshole to my family or my friends. He's an ass. He's the person that like, when somebody does something and you're out, right? Or like something, he, what's so funny to me is he will never complain at a restaurant. Right. I will always complain. Right. <laughs> like if I, if somebody brings me something I didn't order, I'll be the first one wife. to be like, my wife's just I don't, I didn't order this. Yeah. Only because like, I just, I can't, like I have right. this much time in my life for things to do for myself. So I get really upset when things aren't right. right. But I'm always like, very respectful about it because right. I used to serve. Well, or someone will shit in your food if you if, exactly. you're, if you're not respectful. About I used to work in restaurants, right. so I know that firsthand. Right. I didn't shit in anybody's food. I promise. <laughs> um, I promise I didn't. But but he will never complain about that kind of stuff. Right. But, so it, was, it always takes me back a little bit when we're out and like somebody I don't even know like driving wise yes or I can't even explain it sometimes he'll just like snap back at someone I'm just like whoa right right okay. but but it's he's the type of person you want in your corner very honest he's very honest right I guess that's the way yeah that's kind of the way to do it like, there's blunt there's honesty I think that when I hear asshole I think uh, again of someone who's just kind of again being being shitty sometimes it doesn't seem like that's what it is it's more like he's oh, being see, honest for me I don't know like asshole this is this is how fucked up I am. But for me, asshole, I kind of think is like a good thing. Is that crazy? It depends on, I, but I th- it's it's a definition. I think we have a different definition. Yeah, we have a different definition of the word. You like yeah. honest. You like blunt. You like tell me exactly what your thoughts are, even if they're not flattering thoughts. Always. Right. Always. Right. I I hate. I will only ask Don't, people's opinions who I know yeah. are going to be honest. Don't with pussyfoot me. around. Just tell me the truth. It's just tell me the truth. Yeah, exactly. I get it. That makes sense. So, yeah. well, first of all, can, I, can, what's your boyfriend's name? Nils. Nils. So when did you and Nils meet? We met in 2013, I believe. 2013. Yeah. Okay. And you, where? We met at a bar, my favorite bar, um, okay. the Gold Room in Echo Park. Okay. How they used to do um, $5 specials. You get a shot of tequila and a PBR. Uh-oh. So you had like two specials. At that time, I was 20. I was 22 when I met him. 22. Okay. Um, at that time, uh, yeah, you get like, you get shit faced. Right. Absolutely shit canned off of like three specials. Right. But me and my best friend used to go there all the time and... I knew who Nils was. He didn't mm-hmm. know who I was. How did you know who, who he was? Well, I worked with his ex-girlfriend. Uh-oh. We are no longer friends. Were you friends before that, though? Uh, yeah, we were. Okay. We were friends. Did you, did you, wait, so you, so you, all right, tell me the story. Tell me okay, the story. Okay, so right. I worked with his ex-girlfriend. Um, we were both front desk receptionists. Okay. At, I'm not going to say where, okay. but we were both front desk receptionists. And um, I was kind of like the assistant manager. She had gone on tour, and when she came back... Um, she had kind of like lost her assistant manager job, not for any bad reason, right. but because um, she's about she had to get, been away. She, she's about to get a double whammy. Yeah, she had been away. So I, I knew that they were dating for a while, um, and we weren't extremely close, but we were friends. Sure. Towards the end of our friendship, obviously, we were we kind of definitely had faded. But I met Nils at a bar, completely random. I, I knew, and they hadn't been dating for about. We met in July. They had broken up in the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. So a few months had passed, but I definitely knew that they had been in a serious relationship or whatever. And um, I met him at a bar. I walked into the bar and he was staring at me. And I told my best friend, I know that guy. I'm almost positive it's this person's ex-boyfriend. Um, I, I, that's probably why he's staring. Right. And um, You were not dating anyone at the time, though. No, I okay. wasn't dating anybody at the right. time. Um, I had been single for a while. I had actually been in like a really serious relationship that I thought was going to be like forever, one hundred percent. When I first arrived in LA, I'd met somebody, and we we'll jump off. we'll jump back into that. All right, All so right. that's like a whole yeah, a whole we'll, other we'll, thing. We'll get, we'll get into that. But yeah, so we met at the bar, and the kind of like the whole night went by, and he was just kept looking at me, and I could not understand like why he was staring at me. And I went home, and I remember calling my mom the next day, and I'd be like, "Oh yeah, I saw so and so's ex boyfriend at the bar." And like would not take his eyes off me all night. And I was like, I wonder if he was trying to figure out where he knew me from, right. or like. I don't know. I was like, this is so weird. I was like, but I, ha- I keep thinking about it. But can't you tell though? Like, I mean, that's, I guess it's always a thing. It's like, but can't you tell when a guy's looking at you to where he's interested also? And I think that's why I was so like intrigued by it. Cause part of me was like, okay, there's something a little bit more here. And right. I'd never seen him at that bar, but he had no, he, I saw him like talking to a bunch of people Okay, and we have a mutual friend. So we, his mutual, the mutual friend came over to us was like blacked out hammered. Like didn't okay. remember the night at all. Okay. And was like giving us a lap dance. I remember this like it was yesterday because I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh my God, somebody needs to take him home. Right, right. And then he, once he walked away from me and my friend, we were like, ha, 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 okay. He went over to Nils. Right. And I was like, how have we never crossed paths before? 
Like well, so you basically crazy. went up to him though. Not not No, he- so the whole the way it all came together is like we left. Yeah. So I hadn't spoken to him at all. The next day on Facebook, okay. the mutual friend posted on my wall and was like, Were you at Gold Room last night? And I'm like, Yeah, so were you. <laughs> yeah, we talked. You gave me a lap dance. And then he was like, Don't remember it at all. And this was all public. Sure. Then he posts a screenshot of a conversation between him and Nils on my wall. Like, no Fs given. Okay. And it basically is Nils asking our mutual friend who the girl was right. that he had been talking to. And then it was said something along the lines of, like, fine as hell or, like, hot as hell, but you didn't introduce. I remember that was, like, the last line of their conversation. Sure. So his ex-girlfriend sees the post on my Facebook oh, no. wall okay. and texts me right away. Right. It's like, oh, I saw what Nil said on your Facebook. Haha, <laughs> so funny. And I was like, oh, well, yeah. But I didn't take it really seriously, but right. immediately Nils and I um, became Facebook friends. He okay. had requested me that same day. He didn't even care that his friend had put that on his wall. Like they just didn't, I was so weird to me because I remember like I'd only been here for a couple years in okay. LA and I was just like in Illinois, like everyone's so conservative and you know, people are so forward out here. Right, and very was, much so, yeah. Yeah, and that's almost like when you're from the Midwest or from the South yeah. or whatever, you you were almost like even more intrigued. Right. So you, so you liked that. So the fact that you say you clearly saw this guy knew that this post was out there, but he doesn't care. Yeah. Because it, to him, it was like, yeah, whatever. Let her know how I feel about right. it. Right. I don't care. And see, how, and, and see and, what happens. And that's kind of nice. It's kind of refreshing when right. there's no BS involved. Right. Totally. Um, so we immediately became Facebook friends and then about a week passed. And then I had been working five straight days. So I told my best friend, okay, tonight we're getting drunk. Right. Let's go. And we walked into Gold Room, and I remember like looking at you the board. You love this Gold Room, huh? Oh, it's the best. Yeah. It, it sucks now, but it was okay, the best but it was back good. in the day. Okay. Yeah, I walked into Gold Room. I clapped my hands together like, it's time to get drunk. Right. And when I clapped my hands together. 22 years old, the world's at your fucking feet. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. When I clapped my hands together, Nils, who's sitting at the bar with our mutual friend, turned around and looked at us. And then they looked at each other and started laughing. And then I was like, oh, yeah, they've been talking about us. Like, this is so obvious. Right. And then that night we ended up hanging out all night. We all went back to his place, had a party till like 5 a.m. And then my friend and I were like leaving his house like five o'clock in the morning. And he was telling my friend, you got to convince Sinead to go out with me. And I was like, I work with your ex because this conversation had come up. We'd been hanging out all night. Right. Um, I was like, I work with your ex. Like, this is weird. It's not going to work out. How much of a dilemma is it for for you, though? Like, internally, for real, though? Like, do you think, do you tell yourself, like, I'm, yeah, I have to say this, and I feel this, but but I think I'm going to go out with this guy. Well, for, in the beginning, I didn't really know him. I knew that he was good at partying. And, right. like, we got along really well. But there no was nothing. To him yet. Yeah, there was nothing about him yet that was, like, I'm willing to be that girl, sure. you know? And also, I fully stand by girl code and whatever. Um, there's so much more to that story that I truly believe justifies everything that came as a result. Like, I truly feel like I was in the right, but basically, to put, make a long story short, yeah. um, I, had, I did not, I was not ever conveyed to me or communicated to me that there was any sort of interest, at least like, it's so hard to, I don't want to say this, but like, regardless, what I, what happened as a result of everything that went down after that, mm-hmm. I truly believe was just. So there was some stuff in between the, the things that happened with them. Yes. And right. there's like, exactly. And I was just like, okay. But right. I had, I told what, I don't know, it was like a couple weeks later, I decided to go out with him. Okay. Could not stop thinking about him. Okay. So I decided to go out with him. And, and something else happens in, with their relationship that you then say, well, wait a minute, maybe these are the signs that I should do this. Yes. And okay. I'd like found all this stuff sure. out and like, I was like, okay. And I talked to my mom and I was like, I don't know. I just like, I can't stop thinking about him. I don't know what to do. Right. And she was like, well, go out with him. You don't, you don't have to like marry him. Just go out with him right. and see if it's really there before you say anything. So I did. And I went out with them and it was great. And we hung out for about maybe a couple of weeks. And then I decided to tell um, the girl that I was working with. Okay. <clears throat> um, How and and is that a, is that a big is that a big stressful thing for you to do, or you just figured? Oh, uh, I was do really it. stressed. Yeah, you're stressed out. I was really stressed because trying um, to practice in front of a mirror. How are you gonna do it? Yeah, and I was like on the phone uh, with my boyfriend. I was like, eh. and this is like so long ago too. And right. I was like 22, and she's a lot older than me. Yeah. How old is he? Can I ask? That? Yeah, Nils just turned 39. Okay. So I'm 26. So we're 13 years apart. Sure. So um, I was just like, I felt like such a little kid in the situation, you know, like dealing with two adults. Right, right, <laughs> I was right. Like, Damn it. But yeah, it blew up 
blew up, was huge. Um, so the the day that I told her, we spoke on the phone. I uh-huh. asked her to get coffee when she got back from. Being and how out long you've been seeing him at this point? Three weeks? Is that what you said? Um, no, it's probably at this point. It was probably since we had our first date, probably closer to a month. When okay, we so, you got guys, so you're dating for about a month, and you guys both talking about this. So you, you approach the ex girlfriend. You go to coffee. Well, I asked her to go to coffee. Right. She called. Like I texted her. I was like, "Hey, you want to grab some coffee when you get back?" Yeah. Um, she called me right away. She goes, "I know what this is about." Uh oh. Um, and I was like, okay. Right. Um, and then she basically bitched at me real hard. Tore you a new one. Yeah, we got well, into what like, is What is she saying? She was, go everything, everything you could possibly think of. about Home wrecker, like, asshole. Yeah, and like things about him too, yeah. trying to scare me out of being with him. This is what's going to happen if you get yeah. yourself involved yeah. with him. And then I'm yeah. like, okay, if you truly feel this way about him, then why do you care? Like, let me make my right. own decisions. Right. You know? Um, and yeah, she said some awful things about him that... I, there was part that actually like came in our came up in our relationship too because some of the sure. things that she said to him, that sticks with you in your head yeah and in yeah. the back of my head like I never told him some of the things that she said about him right but, but well, see that's I interesting was, though because that's because then that you kind of hold that there because yeah. one, one part of you is I'm not going to listen to this because mm-hmm. you're just saying this out of spite but and then who the would other- I be to accuse him of being this type of person right. when I had just met him like a month sure, or but, two prior. But that being said, though, you still keep that there Absolutely. and you're on the lookout for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right. And at that time, I'm 22. She's in her 30s. She's sure. older. She's wiser. So I'm like, and she's a woman and right. I respect like other women. So I was, I always had that in the back of my head and mm-hmm. it really did. It really screwed with a lot of our relationship in the beginning. Right. What's she talking? She's just talking about other women and stuff or just like looking No, around? just like the type of person he is okay. and like things he would catch up to and just, oh, it's just insane. Right. And none of it was true. Right. And so your, your, your vision now is, is a little tainted because of it. Because yeah. of the conversation. Yeah, All right. Exactly. So, but you're doing the best you can because you're, you're also, you're knowing that she's dealing with some pain here. Right. So you're right. trying to and I, maneuver and it. I was very understanding to that. Right. Because like I said, I had been out of a relationship that was by far one of the most devastating things I've ever been through in my right. life. Right. Okay. So I I got it and I was like, okay, this girl's really like she's upset and that made me feel awful. Mm-hmm. But we also worked together. So it got to a point where we couldn't even work together anymore. And it was like we would come in to Yeah, what's that work day like? Oh, it was terrible. Like what? We wouldn't speak. So like at the end of each shift like And it was, was noticeable to oh, everybody else. Everybody else, my managers right. knew, my boss knew, the owner knew. And like, it becomes the big drama of the office. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Are you the bad guy in the situation to the most people in the office? Or they well, just... I, w- I think I would have been the bad guy because she had basically gotten a couple of our coworkers on her in her corner, and I just I couldn't have cared any less. I sure. was miserable going to work, but that was about it. Um, but Thank you for using that expression the right way. You said couldn't care any less. Everybody says could care less. If you could, you should sit in a corner, care less, and then come Who back when you can't. could care less? So many people say it. So many people say could care less. No, that's not right. It, no, it's not right. It's not sorry, right go ahead. I'm Couldn't sorry. Couldn't care any less. Thank you. Um, but yeah, but then she ended up being let go from our job for other uh, reasons. Okay. So then we didn't say her name. Can we say why she was let go? Um, yeah, we can. We I think we can. Yeah, because we didn't say who she was. We know, nobody knows who she is. Nobody knows who she is. Um, she. Well, I mean, our, my friends know who she is. Yeah, but I mean, the- she was let go for basically going behind our owner and our manager's boss okay. um, in more than one way. I'll well, just say that. Okay, so like maneuver, making maneuvers to try to better herself. So this this adds into maybe your conversation then of like, well, this person's dishonest doing this exactly. stuff. Exactly. Right, yeah. right. It was, there was a lot of stuff that came out and it was like a huge thing. Sure. Um, and it became a legal issue. I'll say that. So then, right. so then, so that makes you feel better now. After all right. of that went down, I was like, okay, well then there you go. Right. This person clearly doesn't ha- doesn't think twice about just lying. Right. Is she un- was she unstable? Do you think? I don't know. I don't yeah. know what her deal was. Okay. I really don't like. I I don't know what other goes on in other people's heads and minds right. and spaces or whatever. Um, I think that most of the time, which is sad, and I can't say this for everybody, and I honestly don't know if this is the case, but I lean more towards this. It's like a, it's a matter of privilege. Right. Like it's too much. You, you have give, you've been given too much. Yeah. And like now you're taking don't know, it for granted too. You take it for yeah. granted. And like, you don't know what it's like to like work, work for shit. Right. You well, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And again, karma's a bitch. And it's gross. Yeah. Like that's the thing. That's the biggest turnoff in like humanity for me really yeah. is like nobody understands like what is going on in other people's lives. If you just stop, I had a conversation with my sister the other day and I was like, okay, and the last thing I said was like, all right, just right, let's just both remember like there are kids dying all around the world. Right. And then it just you just stop and you're like, 
Was All that right. it was a fight you were having your, with your sister? No, we were just like having a conversation oh, about okay. life and like complaining about different shit. Got you it. know, right? And you're and so you're basically saying there, are, even though these concerns we have these concerns in our lives, there are bigger concerns. There's out so there. many worse things that could happen to you. Right. And then then I'm just like, okay, so when people don't. When people live their whole lives like they're owed something, like the world owes them something, and every single person they meet owes them right. something. It pisses you off. It pisses me off like you wouldn't even yeah. believe. Yeah. Because I can honestly say I used to be one of those people and I'm disgusted at it. Right. So like now that I'm like just like a self reflection that you have you, yeah. you, you made the And I'm change. insecure about it too. Right. Because I think back to like the beginning of mine and Nil's relationship and like a lot of the shit that we went through was because of me and like how immature I was. Like what? What's some what's something that I was you just did? a horrible girlfriend, I think, in the beginning. Like I had a lot of trust issues coming off of that relationship. So you were the jealous one ish. Yeah, kind okay. of. Like but what? Like, like, not what? Give me an like example. Jealous. I was like that crazy bitch, you know? Are you worried though? Is that something because of maybe the situation that you, it's a kind of maybe a similar situation is where you're dating him and now because that girl's thoughts are in your head and also because like the way that you guys, well, I knew his ex-girlfriend, maybe he's dating one of my right. friends or something. Is right. it, is it, it was like a, it was a mixture of a lot of things, I think. I think it was one, he was a lot older than me and I never ever felt like. Was he the oldest person you had dated? Yeah, I've always, I mean, the, my, my ex-boyfriend, the one before him, sure. was also six years older than me. Okay. Uh, Significant jump, though. But yeah, yeah, I mean, 13 years is a big age gap. Sure. And it's not, it doesn't seem as big now that we're 26 and 39 and have a kid, but being 22 and 35 is a huge huge break between sure. our mentality, our personalities, the way we handle things, the way we approach situations, our maturity levels. Mm -hmm. I dated a girl when I was 30... I was 31 and she was 22 and I and this is 31 now now it's like I'm, I'm in bed by 10 o'clock um, but again like the 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 level of miles per hour that she wanted to go right. in life right. and then to me I'm just like we were dating she came over at two in the morning and she had brought like a whole bottle of like rum and I'm like I'm sleeping. Yeah. I'm like, we can drink tomorrow night. Yeah. But it's like 21, 22, you walk in, what's next? And you're just selfish at that time, you know? Right. It's all about like living in the moment. Figuring it out. You're not, think, you're not thinking about tomorrow, right. let right. alone next week or next year. Right. You're just like living day to day. Right. So I just, I feel like I was extremely selfish throughout our relationship in the beginning. Um, but it's, it's one of those like things when we've been together now, it's 2018. We've been on and off. It's like five years. Yeah, well, yeah. I guess, no, did I say 2013? I guess. 2013, as you I, said, when you as met at the bar. I think we met in 2014. Okay. I always get 2013. See, it's usually the guy that forgets that. Oh, yeah, he has a horrible memory, too. Right, so he doesn't, he thinks you guys met 20, last week. Yeah, yeah, I think it was 2014. 2014. Yeah. Okay, so you met. Some, Coming up on four years. Now, are you at AMC yet at that point? No, that's 2015. I started, 2014, 2014. I started AMC because I remember when we started dating. Yeah, this is all yeah, right. When yeah, we started yeah. dating, I was already hosting the Pretty Little Liars after show. Okay. I was, st I had just started or was starting the strain after show. Okay. And then. The movie I, talk you had been doing. Movie talk I had done like once or twice. Okay. I can't be just brought me in to fill in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When um, I think it was Chris Lee at the time still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like out of town. And he okay. was like, yeah, we just need somebody. Moba's not available. And then you did it. And that's kind of how you got involved. Yeah. With and and we'll, I, we'll talk more about the yeah, whole yeah, family yeah. thing too. So you, all right. So then you, because I want, I'm fascinated by all this stuff with Nils. So mm -hmm. you said on and off. Yeah. So when's the first off? The first off was... Literally, probably two months into our into our dating, and this is because of you, because from what you said, ish. Yeah. Okay. What happened? Um, I went crazy. You went nuts. Like, yeah, what, I went but what's, nuts. But what's crazy? Like, like what, what is that? Like jealous, but not not even jealous. Just uh -huh. crazy. Calling him, t checking texts. Like, yes, what you, things yeah, is like that. that. What you're doing? Okay. Like things like that, and like I said, very what, selfish. What's that about? Well, what's the worry? I don't even know if it was a worry. I th I think it, part of it was. But most of it was just sheer selfishness. selfishness. Sheer selfishness. And yeah. you scared because of the old relationship that it's going to go away? Maybe, or you like know? maybe it was maybe it was because I was a lot younger than him. Sure. Maybe it was a mixture of all of that. The our whole the way the way our whole relationship started was a shit show. Mm -hmm. I just I don't feel like anybody should start a relationship under those right. circumstances. Right, fireworks all over the place. Yeah, and just like yeah. people being mad at you and people trying to come in the way. And like right. a month into us dating, after like after we had talk to her after everything had gone down with her we weren't talking they weren't talking obviously like she had to come get her stuff from his oh. place how long did they date by the way over three years okay so that's understood. And they were living together oh, okay at the yeah. time not at the time no not okay. at the time right okay but like they lived together in their relationship sure. so it was a serious relationship and i think that also caused an insecurity for right me. so like there was a lot of things but most of it was i could have handled all of it so much 
better than I did. Do you compare yourself to her at all during the, the begin in the beginning here? Is that part of it too, or no? no? No, I don't think so. Okay, it's very rare that I find another girl who's at all similar to me, my yeah. personality. Which sometimes I look at other girls my age and I'm like, man, you're such a catch. Like right. you've got it all together. You've got it all figured out. Your sure. whole life is like not chaos, not hectic. And you're hard on yourself, though, aren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Why are you so hard on yourself? I don't know. I think it's like. It's like self-deprecating. It's almost like yeah. it's like uh, it's like my defense mechanism mm -hmm. a little bit, I guess, is where it, most of it comes down to. But also, like life hasn't been very easy. Well, yeah, know? I mean, and, and that's and there's a lot of things that I always noticed, uh, some things that you s said, and I want to get, I want to kind of take us down this path before we start talking about everything because I have a question I want to ask you, but I'm going to wait. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys, see, so the first thing, you, so two months. Yeah, you start getting too insecure and and jealous, and he says, "I I, I can't do this. I've had Based, enough." Yeah, that's literally what he said. Yeah, he was like, "I don't know what happened to you." Right. I I, I can on I know exactly the table we were sitting at at the coffee shop in Echo Park. We actually walked past it the other day. We were taking pictures. Right. And we walked past the coffee shop, and I was like, "Ah, the good old days." Right. He's like, "What are you talking about?" And I was like, "Don't you remember the first time we ever broke up? Was we were sitting at this table?" And he's like, "Oh God, yeah. What did you do that time?" Right. But our we dated for about nine months. Okay, but the two months though on and off. But the two months is the first one. The two months is the first one. He says he says no, and then how <laughs> are you devastated? Uh, does it? Do you? Do yeah, you, how I does think it, how do you get it back? It snapped together? me back. Like that day snapped me back because mm -hmm. I remember it was a Tuesday. I was going to go host the after show, so okay. I didn't have time to be upset. All right, you just had to do your thing. I got in the car. I called my mom. I said I fucked up. Yeah, like, I fucked up. And she's you took like, responsibility for it. Yeah. Okay. You weren't. You weren't like. You, you, but in in the conversation. And that came back house? to my insecurity too. And I was like, of sure. course. Right. Like it was almost as if I was waiting. I was waiting for him to decide I was too young for him. Right. You're right. Right. And by waiting for him to decide I was too young for him, I was making myself appear too young ten for times him. Right. less mature than I really was. Right. You know. Right. So and it was almost like I I I was so afraid of being hurt. Right. You were almost asking him without realizing it for him to break yeah. up with you and snap you out of and it. And he used to say that all the time throughout a relationship. He's like, I feel like. You're you're testing right. something, and I wouldn't even realize it even long after we were dating sure. too. Sure, a guy would always just be sitting and waiting for it not to work out. Right, and I think it was because, it's because of the first relationship. Yeah, because yeah. I'd never been so certain of anything in my entire right. life. Right. Well, you're also I mean, again. So if you're, if you're telling that that relationship was four years, you were like what 17, 18 when you started that. No, relationship? no, no. That, that my relationship with my ex boyfriend. You mean? Yeah, the four year one. The no, that wasn't four years. Oh, it wasn't. No, his Nils's relationship with his how, girlfriend. So the one that devastated you. How yeah. long? How long was we that? We were only together for about a year and a half. Okay, so you know, but it was like early twenties can't even explain it it yeah. wasn't there's no way that time could justify our relationship you thought it was from the you get thought go it was the, he was the guy from the get-go it was it was an absolute whirlwind right. movie romance this is the this is the, the guy beforehand too yeah. so what, and we'll jump back to the nils thing but what happened to this guy what what was do you talk to this person anymore do you No, he's married he's married yeah. and did that did that kick your ass when that happened yeah, and like I was with Nils at that time, but it's like a very, it's a very it's weird, a it's a very weird thing because yeah. you're happy for them. Like at the end of the day, all I wanted was to know that he was okay. Right, but the crazy. what the what ifs pop in your head. I mean, shit. Listen, for, yeah. for same thing with I'm I'm happily married with two kids, and I I you always like think in your in your head like back in the day, like I fucked up a relationship when I was in college, and it's just and again she's married, she's got she's got uh, two three kids, and I'm and I'm thinking to myself. You know, if what a different world we live in. Right. If the, so, if if it if I don't do this one particular thing, then I don't. Then, and if I didn't fuck that yeah. up, I don't have my two beautiful kids. Right. So I'm right. glad I fucked it up. You know. Yeah. And but but you but you all those thoughts start to go in your head. Yeah, and it's also like for me, it was also it's hard as as somebody who who you start wondering. Well, that person then is going to say. Thank God that relationship didn't work out, or thank God th that's where you go though first, huh? I know it's cr it's so messed up. Yeah. I told you I'm fucked up, but what, Christian. But what is that? Does that come from? Is like where, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I that's think both it's relationships just, now. Yeah, I don't know what it is because like it's weird. I have a lot of confidence in mm -hmm. myself. But your family life is is really good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I have a wonderful. You got family. a great family. You got a great like everybody support system. <laughs> it's, where, I don't know. Do you know where that, does it come from? 
where does that come from? Is because you, it's anxiety. It's not even okay. like, what it comes down to is, is sheer anxiety. Uh-huh. Is, that's where there's got to be a scenario in your life that something happened well, younger. Well, I mean, I was diagnosed with anxiety when I was very young. I mm-hmm. think I was like in third or fourth grade, and I was diagnosed with phobias and anxiety. Wow! Because that anxiety is not just a. It's I overthink everything. Okay, you're just seeing it now because we're talking about relationships. Right, right, but if right. we switch to career, we switch to just the day to day. It's there in your life. It's, it's there, right. and and having an anxiety attack comes it's like out a of monster nowhere. that doesn't go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like people people say, you know, like there's this whole like movement of talking about like mental illness and right, things like right. that and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad that like more and more people get to talk about because talk about it because growing up. I had a phobia. They were treating a phobia. Okay. Um, and that's like, it's a metaphobia. I have a fear of throwing up. You do? Yeah, I have a horrible fear of throwing up. Wow. Throwing up, gagging, being nauseous, anybody throwing up around me. I'm surprised you still drank. It. But yeah, well, I've never thrown up from being drunk. Really? In my life. Okay. Because I know my limits. There is one time, uh-huh. and it actually pertains to something collider related, okay. but we'll get to it. Okay. Um, but yeah, it, it's an anxiety thing. Yeah. So I overthink everything. Sure. That's the, the first thing that comes into my and head. You did that when, she, when you started in the third grade? Is that what you said? Yeah. Well, I had my the first time I remember being afraid of throwing up, right. I was eight or nine years old and then see a, a scary movie with somebody throwing up or something like, no i don't i don't know i i honestly can relay to you every single time i've ever thrown up since i was yeah. five and you like, just didn't crazy. and so you didn't want to do it and like does your does your mom or dad have anxiety no so you just got it just came out is your sister no no do you just I mean my sister has anxiety sure but, but not it's like not you. she she has like Look at her. She's like the only manager, really. She's the only talent manager now yeah. besides Marky at right. CMEG. Yeah. So her stress is like justified in every way. Sure. I get anxiety her about yeah. you things I can't even explain. I can be walking down the street and all of a sudden I will start having an, an anxiety attack right. and I don't know what it is. Right. And it could be things that are triggered by like the sight of something or the smell of something or the vibe of something. Right. Then things stick with me like like horribly. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So that plays into this this two month breakup here because right. that's part of the anxiety and everything yeah. and the thoughts and the process. And yeah. so you know, you tell your mom that you fucked up, and she said, and she says what now? Because at first, she's the one that gives you advice and says go out with him in the first place. Does mm-hmm. she say make it right or do what you have to do? She said, you are young and mm-hmm. learning, and you're doing the best that you can to navigate through right. everything. And she said, if it's meant to be. He'll come back. Okay. So, and he comes back? Yeah, like a week later. Okay. He calls you? He texts me. Okay. Um, and I hadn't heard from him in so, that so week. He says, what, stop fucking around. Let's get, let's get back together. <laughs> well, the, I actually hadn't, I would, I did really well that whole week. Right. My best friend came over that night and I said, I'm just so fucking depressed right now. Yeah. And she's like, is it all hitting you? And I'm like, yeah, cause now it's been a week and I haven't talked to him. Yeah. And it's over. Smart that you it's didn't done. text him though. You didn't No, do, because I didn't want to keep That's doing I mean. the thing that I had been broken up with for, right. you know? Right. You just kind of, you, you held so back and go. you did what a lot of people can't do. And it's, if he's meant to come back, he'll come back. Right. A lot of people can't do that. And they, they sent those texts and it ultimately destroys any chance that they had. Yeah. You don't do that. Right. And he comes back. Yeah. A week later, um, okay. I was sitting on the couch talking to her and I was crying. Yeah. And she said, you need to get it together. Like you have five more minutes left to cry. Right. And then we're going out. Okay. So I got up. And then I went outside with her. We were sitting on the front porch and we had like this beautiful view of all of LA. And I was just like trying to like reflect on my life and being like, your life is not that bad. Your life is not that bad. And I told her, I was like, I just, I just, I'm really upset. And I was like, but whatever, like it's done. It is what it is. I think this is, I need to shut this chapter. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, but I just, for me, it was the first time I'd felt that way since my previous relationship. Right. And I tried dating. coming back. And I tried dating in between, but I was horrible at dating. Well, in between meeting Nils. Yeah, and my ex. Right. And and how, and so what was the, what was the time period like between that? Like we broke up. That's why I thought we met in 2013 because we broke up in 2013. I met Nils the following year, 2014. So So you had like a year. Just over a year. So you were dating. So why is dating so bad? Are you, are you a relationship person? Well, one, I was absolutely heartbroken. Okay. Okay. And so you that couldn't get close to anybody. I couldn't get close to anybody. I right. couldn't let anybody in. Okay. Um, and I was also like such a party animal back then. The you way were. I, yeah, the okay. way I handled situations was to drink them away. You know, so I was is like it, twenty. Is it, I was twenty-one. Are you drinking? You're going out. Are you having flings? I was drinking or you just to, know? 
No. No. Like I couldn't, I had such a wall up. Okay. So, so you weren't even getting close to anybody. No, just, and I was I'm, so lonely. Right. Like I was completely alone. Right. Um, and I had crossed paths with my ex a couple times in that year. And that fucks you up even more. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I can't even explain it. And I look back on it and I'm embarrassed by it. And like, I'm embarrassed by the way I like held myself together in those situations. And I'm embarrassed by the way I handled our breakup because... I don't think embarrassed is, is fair. Well, because well because we crossed paths and yeah. I was a crazy person. Yeah. Like I was just, just uncomfortable to, yeah. and insecure. You were hurt. And I was hurt. And yeah. for me, I there's no way I can be ashamed of that because right. I because I was young and right. I was learning. So I don't you shouldn't use embarrassed. Yeah, and I needed to grow up. Like right. I needed that relationship to show me like this is what it takes right. to be in a serious relationship and this is what it takes Crash to deal course. with heartbreak even yeah. more so. I don't I don't even think that the reason for that relationship was for the relationship. I think it was to deal with loss and heartbreak. 100%. Because it taught so, me a lot. And that's what I was talking about before was just like because then you're able to go through new things that now you can go through with Nils that you wouldn't have handled the same way had you exactly. not gone through that scenario. Exactly. So you, but you dated in between. It didn't work out. Yeah, you, I did you the couldn't Tinder get, thing. Couldn't get close to anybody. Yeah, and, and everybody was gross. I right. met up with one Tinder. Okay, so I would talk what's to a worst, bunch of people. What's your worst Tinder date? Well, I met the only Tinder I ever met up with, and I didn't even I didn't even purposely meet up with them. Right. I was at the bar. Mm -hmm. My Tinder goes off. The same bar. I was at the Gold Room. You love that Gold yeah, Room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. It's a piece of shit now. Right. But <laughs> so if you go there and you're like, "What the hell is this?" Right. It's this not endorsing it. Used now. to be a Dodgers bar. So like okay. all the after all the Dodgers it's downtown? game. It's in Echo Park, okay. and it's been around. It would been around for years and years right. and years. It's a piece. Of, it's absolute right. garbage now. Um, they changed everything, okay. and they serve like cocktails. Like, who do you think you are? Right. Um, but I, I, my Tinder goes off, and he's like, "Hey, I think I just saw you inside the Gold Room." I was like, "Oh, fuck!" Right. Like, because I had pr I had never met up with a Tinder before. I would right. like string all these people along, which is not a good thing. But I just didn't have it in me to actually go out on dates with right. them. And so I was like, "All right, cool. We're outside. Come meet us." He comes outside. I'm not even kidding. Motherfucker is four foot tall. Oh no! My best friend calls him mm. the tiny tinder. Okay. So like, he was the shortest person I think I've ever seen. Was he nice? Yeah, but he was tiny. Yeah. I'm tiny. Right. I'm five foot three. Right. So if I have to look down to you, you could carry him. I could carry him. Yeah. And that's not being that's not me being disrespectful. He had no physical disability right. Right. of any sort. He was just short you're as just, fuck. You're just not gonna be you're just not gonna be attractive. I felt to like her. I was talking to a twelve year old. Right. The whole time. And that's too bad. Yeah, Poor it guy. was awful. Right. I so saw I bought him a uh, street meat hot the dog, you know? <laughs> I bought him a hot dog. I was like, okay. Oh, <laughs> poor guy. Yeah, no, it was awful. <laughs> poor guy. So but but he but does he does he tell you the truth? Uh, I mean I think you need to leave with that if you're him. I know. We're like, put it on your friggin' Tinder profile. I feel bad for him, though. But, you know, what are you going to do? No, yeah, I don't feel bad for him. He was kind of like a douche. Oh, he too. was a douche. That's yeah, what I said. Short, was... Like, if you're really, really short, you're yeah. trying to make up for it in your douchiness. Really? Is that a thing? Yeah, I think so. All right. Um, all right. Now we'll jump back. Now we'll jump back to Nils. Nils, mm -hmm. Nils comes around. And so now you said the second breakup was nine months. Is no, this... no, no. 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 We broke up. So we broke up. Base... Well, it was nine months. Yeah. I'd been dating him for nine months when I found out I was pregnant. Right. So in that nine months, All right. you we can't broke just, up you, multiple you just, times. You just bury the lead here. Uh, you, you just, and, and then I, and I found out, I, for, I forgot the cereal at the supermarket. It's not the same thing. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Because I remember at being at, 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 at when we were at Movie Talk, mm -hmm. and they, and you know, people talk. And I hear, Sinead's pregnant. Yeah. And I was like. Well, I actually knew that you and Mark knew. Okay. I knew that you guys knew before anybody else right. knew, um, but I just was like, okay, they know. My sister told me. I think okay. she was like, Christian and Mark do know, I believe. And I said, okay, that's fine. Um, and then she's like, you gonna say something to them? I was like, no, I can't deal with it. Right. And I, I had told I told Campia when I was like, I think Mark had said something to Kelly about it. Uh, maybe. Maybe or like maybe you did or I something. I didn't say anything. I kept my mouth shut. I about think maybe Mark it. had said something to Kelly about yeah. it, but like not in. Any Kelly and for people who don't, Kelly is is Sinead's sister. That's right, yeah. my sister, and um, she works at a talent management company yes. that puts us all crossing paths constantly. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think Mark had said something to my sister along the lines of like congratulations or something, and right. he's like, I guess Mark knows. Well, so so wait a minute. So mm -hmm. then then within that within that time period though too, because I mean. You know, because I, I know how you, you Harrison, your son, how how like you, you post about him all the time, and how mm -hmm. much you, I mean, he's the love of your life. Yeah. But not expected. 
Absolutely not. Right. So I was 22 when I got pregnant. So you were 22. I'd been dating my boyfriend for nine months. My life was never supposed to be like this. So at the time, the scenario that that would cause Harrison, um, do you know, uh uh-oh, that might have been a mistake or it just, it's an accident? Like oh, you, I think you think of all of those things. But I'm just mean, because sometimes, sometimes the scenario happens and you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to go on and we just, we've been doing everything that we've been doing with his birth control or whatever, whatever it is. And then something happened. Like just, oops, it's, how, how did that happen? We were, yeah. we were protected. We yeah, were, yeah, yeah. No, I took all the necessary precautions. Right. Um, and I remember we went to Vegas to accept the IAWT whatever award. Right. Um, I drank a lot and then we went to Six Flags Nils and I went to Six Flags and I just was like, I feel like shit. Yeah. And then Memorial Day came around and I was like, I've been feeling like shit for a straight month yeah. now. And I thought it was like all the drinking. Yeah, I did every possible thing you're not supposed to do when you're pregnant. Sure. When I was like. But you didn't know. No, I had no idea. Right. But I thought it was like all the drinking. And then the reason, the how I came to find out was actually uh, my boyfriend made a comment about my boobs. He was like, your boobs are great. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, they're huge. And as soon as he said that, I kid you not. You know. It was instant. How long? How long? So what, what are you about? A, a month? A mo- I was two months. When two I, months when yeah, you found out. Yeah, when I found out. Oh, wow. So you find out and then your world just changes. Oh, yeah. The day that I found out I was pregnant was the same day I signed a contract with, um, I don't want to say it. Okay. A huge contract. Sure. That... For a network where you're supposed to be the most well-rounded, well-represented, right. responsible human being in the entire world, and also for children. So so in your head now, you're like, oh my God, Like, and here I am, 22 years old, oh, I'm yeah. now pregnant. Oh, I was devastated. I, I was absolutely devastated. Right. I collapsed on the floor, I remember. My sister was there. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't speak. I was like, everything was going blurry in front of me. It was like a full-on panic right. attack. And I mean, I, plus your anxiety that you already have. Oh, at this absolutely. Point. Every and thought I, in your in everything. Your, right. I was like, my life is over. My right. career is over. I'm 22. At that point, I had just started hosting. Right. I'd Do only you think been hosting Nils, for a few months. Are you thinking Nils? Do you think Nils is going to stay? Is he going to take off? Yeah, or? well, because Nils had Nils is divorced. Right. Um, and so he always told me he never wanted kids, and I would always be like, "Yeah, we'll talk about it." Like, right. I at that time I was 22. I was like, divorced before this relationship. This is okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So he's divorced and like. He would always tell me, like, eh, kids are not in the picture, in the right. cards for me. Right. Um, and I was like, okay, no worries. Right, because you're um, not thinking about that at this point. No. And right. I was like, I'm 22. Like, right. it's fine. We'll deal with it later. Sure. I'm sure I can convince him to have my kids later on. Wait, but you, so, okay, so that, that answers another question. You, you wanted to have kids eventually in your life. Yeah, I definitely wanted kids right. eventually in my life. Right. Yeah. And then so the. But find, I never really thought about it. It wasn't, it's, it's, it wasn't in the plans right now. You're the, no. the career and sustaining the relationship was, that's, that's what was the focus. Right. But not anymore, because now here you now and here's and here's another question that, that comes because again sometimes tw- things happen like this often too. What the decision is, I'm keeping. I'm keeping. Yeah. yeah. You know, is that a lot of times it's whether it's a religious thing, whether it's not. I you start to think, what's the thought process? That was the that I think that was some some of the hardest decision making. Yeah. I've ever made in my entire life, or I've ever been through, because I. For me, I had to not think about those things. Right. I had to not think about my religion. I had to not think about my family. I had to not think about Nils. I had to not think about anybody else. You had to make the choice. And I had to make the right. choice. And at the end of the day, that was my biggest struggle in life. And I, it's crazy because um, I used to go to church all the time before I got pregnant. Right. And it's been something that I've struggled with ever since because it, I found it very hard going back to church. Why because, is that? Because I, I, I considered abortion and I almost felt guilty Because about you it. considered it. Right. And the decision I the decision to keep Harrison right. was not a religious decision. And I always felt like it would be. Like right. if I ever came down to it, I would never get an abortion because I'm a Christian. I was raised in a Christian household right. and like Christians don't have abortions. Right. Like that was but it wasn't that. And so but it was beating you up the the fact that that thought came in. Yeah, your and like mind. for me, I I like I would talk to my mom and she'd be like, you know what, this is not the Christian way, blah, blah, because I was very honest. Right. I was like, uh, yeah, I called them that night, told her everything. She's like, everything's gonna be fine. And then as a couple weeks went by, I was like, I don't know if I want this. Right. And like time was running out to make a decision. Right. And she was like, oh, this is not the Christian way and blah, blah, blah. And I literally was like, mom, I'm, I hate to tell you, but like, I don't care right now. Right. Like, I, I can't explain it. 
but I don't care about that. Like it that, wasn't it wasn't religion. You were getting yeah. advice, but always, it really the spotlight was on yeah, you. Yeah, and I always yeah. thought it would be. Right. I always thought if I ever found myself in that situation, sure. it would be so easy for me to just be like, I can't do this because of my religion. Right. And it wasn't that easy. Right. And I think that was something I struggled with for a long time after that. But eventually, the thought process was, I what right? I just don't think. It's not even a right. I don't even think it's it's... It's normal, I guess. Yeah. It seems barbaric for me to decide whether or not that kid lives. If somebody put a bird in front of me, I hate birds. I have a horrible fear of birds. Can't stand them. Right. And um, put a gun next to the bird and was like, kill this bird. I'd be like, no. Why, right. why are you asking me? Right. Why, why do I? Why? What? No. Like, this bird is going to make your life very difficult and stress you out and it's going to cost you a lot of money. Kill it. It's, pro- it's better for this bird not to be here right now. Sure, I would be like, no, that's weird. Right. And th- that's and honestly, that's your and that's your thought, thought that's process. That's my thought right. process. Right. And that's honestly um, what my thought process was in that right. situation. Yeah, this kid's gonna stress me out. Blah 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 blah. This 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 and this and this. But you're gonna do it. But it it it's my decision. Right. Like why? That's why I almost, which sounds crazy now, but at the time, like if that pregnancy didn't work out because. I, I was a, I had a high risk pregnancy and why and why was that? The, I had a high risk pregnancy because like um, so basically after I decided to keep him, right. I went back for the second sonogram right. and they told me I had a high risk pregnancy. Basically, there's no fluid in the amniotic sac, so then I had to go see a specialist. Oh, man. So instead of the baby floating in your in right, your yeah, little yeah. like bubble, mm-hmm. um, he was wrapped in it like a cocoon. And sure. It was I can't even explain it to so you. So they said like, there's a big risk. They said he had a five percent chance of survival. Damn. Mm-hmm. So that when was does after. That change? When I was like six months. That's, so you switched which back Which is partially in. why okay. I didn't talk to you and Mark about it either. Because right. at that time, I was like, I've dealt with too much throughout, throughout this pregnancy. Like, yeah. I don't even want to talk about this. Right. And the funny thing is, that's what I was talking to you before, is that when you, we didn't even know, a lot of people didn't even know that you were pregnant because yeah. you didn't even, like, my, when, it's funny because when, when you were talking about it and you were, and my wife, and I was like, this, you know, Sinead, and I said, she's, she's showing, uh, she's, she's pregnant. And my wife was like, She's yeah, pregnant. I know. How, she's like six and a half, seven months. She's like, no, she's not. Like, and it was, and to, uh, to you, obviously, you knew because your body was changing and everything too, but nobody knew. And then nobody in the, the audience didn't know. There were a couple times towards the end because I stopped working at um, Collider at that time um, in November. Okay. I stopped working at Clever in the middle of December. Okay. So by then, I gave birth to Harrison on January 5th. Crazy. I, my last day filming was December 15th. Wow. So 20 days right. before. Yeah. And um, there were some comments that I started getting on my Instagram. Congratulations. Just watch the video. Right. Congratulations. Right. Like, and I was like, Towards the end oh, of it, though. Shit. Yeah, but yeah that's right the at end the end. But you knew you weren't going to be able to mm-hmm. hide. And there were a bunch of Collider people, too, that were like, Sinead got a boob job. Mm, oh, well, Bet you 100 bucks Sinead got a boob job. Because they were enormous. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. I miss them so much. I really do. They were the best. Yeah. I miss them so much. But yeah, there were a couple of people that were like, oh, how did Sinead's boobs get so big? She definitely got a boob job. Right. And I was like, no, bitch, I'm fucking pregnant right. and miserable. Right. And they're filling up with milk and you have no idea and it's disgusting and they hurt. <laughs> My nipples are on fire. <laughs> yeah. And now, and the next thing you know, and now, and here's this, and here's this little guy mm-hmm. to now say, you know, Give me some food, and then yeah. you can let them go down whenever it's whenever whenever it's you're good and ready. Right. But so so Nils um, doesn't take off. He sticks around. No. No, he doesn't up. at first. Okay. We broke so up. So he was terrified almost immediately after. Was he terrified? Oh yeah. He was terrified. He was terrified. Okay, yeah. and then so because he didn't, and then hence why he didn't want kids. And also, we'd only been together for nine months, and he, right. at the time, he brought up a really good point. Was like we've broken up consistently for nine months. <laughs> like right. we broke up so many times. Our relationship was shit. It was right. in shambles. Is he religious? No. 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 Okay. So like nothing. We didn't. We are so different. Sure. So like nothing that we talked about really made sense to each other. Right. All of his reasons for why this wasn't supposed to be. Right didn't match up with all my reasons and neither one of us could even see what the other person was talking about. Right. Just in different, different paths mm-hmm. completely. But eventually I mindset. was like, whatever, like I said, I had to make this decision for myself and I did. I so decided you to were willing it. to just do, to do it by yourself if he was around or not. Yeah. And I think if I was like 16, 17 or 18, I mean, I don't know, but yeah. it would have been different, but I was 22. Okay. I had such a supportive family who had already told me at that point, um, we're coming out to California. So when I was about three months pregnant, and that's why they moved. My parents moved oh, look to California, at that. and my dad still works in Chicago. So he goes back and forth constantly. Still, mm-hmm. 
They're the best parents in the entire so world. You, so you lived, uh, you lived in Chicago for a long time, right? Yeah, I spent most of my life in Chicago. In Chicago. So then, you, and your dad works from Chicago and just comes here to help at you. First he, at first, he was working here, but he got a new job. Because like all of his, he's been working in Chicago for forever. Right. That's why we came to right. the States. Right, right, right. Was for this job. So like he, his boss let him come here. And okay. it was while he was here that he got offered another job through his work sure. in Chicago. So, but that job requires him to travel. So he commutes back and forth. And it, it's awful. It's like right. a, it's something I carry on my back still because I- You feel that if, if you had not gotten to that situation, so he'd just be able to stay in Chicago. Yeah, and they, they've right. just, they give me so much and they don't, they don't complain. Right. <laughs> they're the best. Like they're honestly, I don't know what I did to deserve such wonderful parents. Well, it sounds like your mom has always been in your corner and you're trying to give, and giving you advice. And yeah. sometimes it's even advice you may not uh, agree with, but she's always there to kind of lend. Yeah, and what's crazy is like, my mom and I butt heads a lot because we're very similar. Sure. My dad and I have always had a very special relationship. Um, like extremely special right. relationship. Whereas like if I need advice on anything, he's the person I would go to, even if it's the most uncomfortable thing in the world and being pregnant and having to tell your father that and being the youngest, his youngest daughter right. is it's awful. How did he handle it? Not well, yeah. but I didn't find out that he didn't handle it very well. He until, didn't show you. No, my that's, mom that's ended good. up telling me a lot later on. She was like, yeah, your dad freaked the fuck out. Right. And he was not happy. Right. He's pissed. You wanted to break Nils legs. I'm sure. Well, he was pissed at me too, because right. I think that my dad has always really thought that I was very like responsible when it comes to things like that, and I am. Right. Like I always it think about mis- things like that. It was a mistake, that. but the problem is with with that particular situation, that one mistake is is you know yeah. can and shift your life. Like there's always things that you can do to be extra careful. Right. And like looking back on that situation, I know I know for a fact there are things that I could have done to be extra careful. Right. So that that's always like that was always a thing that sucked. Right. But like now, I mean, you look back on it and you're just like, eh, whatever. It was a shitty thing that happened. Sure. But like, could I ever imagine my life without Harrison? Harris, that, that's and that's the that's no, the biggest thing because all never. those because now when you the because you put yourself in that situation to like you said when you're going when it's just you and all and you, and your world's rotating. You're like, what the hell am I gonna do? And then now you flash forward to today, and you, before you got here today, you, you're dropping him off, and you see the smiling face, and he cracks you up. And we, you and I talk about our kids all the time, and how the attitudes that they have, and you're like, that was the right decision. That was that was I made the yeah. decision. I yeah, made it. And totally. so yeah, I mean, there are times that you're just like pulling your hair out, but it's just oh like, God, yeah. what's my life like if I don't have yeah. this? Yeah, and I'm not like I'm not naive enough or like afraid of looking a certain way to not be able to be honest and say going back would I have chosen the same thing like I don't know right like I still don't know because I was 22 if I didn't know who Harrison was I'd never met him and somebody was like um you're gonna get pregnant and I'd be like no 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 I don't want to right like it's it's easier yeah and that's easier and I know for a fact that I I, that I should not have gotten pregnant at the age that I got pregnant right like I I should not have But, but I did but when does so Nils freaks out he takes off you're then you start do you start to raise Harrison by yourself without him in the in the picture well, he was always there. So, like, he throughout my pregnancy, he would still come to all the doctors' okay. appointments. You okay, know? so he was he was so he didn't really just take off. I mean, he did. We yeah. didn't speak. But he was there for you, and he was he mm-hmm. he. But he was supportive in the fact where he's not. He wasn't going to be use the word deadbeat. But he was. He, uh, that's not no. that's not fair. He was he was he was. It wasn't like him going. I, I I've I told you what I wanted to do. You're doing your thing. I'm out of here. He didn't no. do that. No. Okay, that's great. No, he didn't. Okay. Um, and even though I thought it was going to be like that in the beginning. It was about a, f- a few months, three, right. four months into it. It says a lot about his character. It says a lot to the fact that like, for someone he, who didn't want to do it, he right. still was there at the appointments. I tell him this all the time, but he's one of the most caring people I've ever come across yeah. in my life. But yeah. He has like this very, like like I said, he's kind of very blunt and very honest and all that stuff and like will kind of be very intimidating. Right. But at the end of the day, like he cares about every single person in his life. Like right. a lot. Well, I mean, you can you can tell. So, yeah. it, but... Then he's when he starts, so he's there for all the doctor's appointment. Does it? I feel, and I don't know this, but I feel like it's a big shift happens once Harrison's born. Yeah, and then he's just like, "That's right. that's my boy." And it wasn't at first, you know, like we went to that first doctor's appointment, and then we had a long talk about it, and I was like, "This is this is over, huh?" Like he's here, right? Things haven't changed, and he was like, "I, I just can't do this. Like I'm sorry, but I can't I can't do this." When he was can't. when he was born. Yeah, this is our first like our first doctor's okay. appointment. Harrison was oh, a couple okay, weeks old. Okay, okay. Yeah, and I was like. Okay, and he's like, I, like, I'll be there for him, but like, I can't, right. I can't do this. Right. And um, I was like, okay, and I like walked out of his car, sobbing, went upstairs. My dad was there, 
and he said, sit down. Because I came in, my, he must have known. Sure. Because he knew I was coming back from the doctor right, with right, Nils right, and Harrison. Right. He said, sit down. He said, this is done. You are done crying over him. Right. He doesn't want to be in the picture. You're going to be fine. We're all here for you. Everybody's here for you. I just flew out from Chicago. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> shut the fuck up. No. Right, right, right. But my dad has always been very um, reasonable. Sure. Very reasonable. Sure. And um, yeah, he was like, you're done. And you needed a little tough love. He, yeah. My yeah. parents are the, the masters of tough love. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, like growing up and I think about it, I'd be like, you're awful. You are mentally abusing me. But thank God, because it made, they made me stronger. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. To handle so many different things in my life and to also like not make excuses for myself too right. much either. Um, and yeah, both my mom and my dad, they were like th there in the living room. My mom was like standing behind my dad, like arms crossed. Right. Like, like you've, you've given it your shot now. He's And they he's, always put things on right. me too, which was like such an interesting way to parent. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure they had very awful thoughts about Nils at that time. Right. But they really didn't like let me know those things. It was always like, you are stronger than this. Right. Make like, your choice. You. you. Yeah, These right. These are the circumstances. Like, how are you going to handle it? Right. Now kick some ass and let's get yeah. over it. Yeah. And that right. was like, I think that was probably like about a week and a half after Harrison was born. Okay. And then. When does Nils come back around? About a week after that. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 it, was, it was like it was the way, day after my, the day after my birthday, I think. So it was weighing on him. So he, he, he knew that he, he, at that point, he makes the wrong decision. Right. And then he, so he weighs on it. He thinks about it and he comes back and says what? Sup. Is this sup? That's it. <laughs> that was the text? Sup. Yeah. I said, sup with you. Yeah. Uh, he said, not much. Watching football. I was like, me too. Yeah. It was a Sunday. Yeah. And then um, I became like weirdly addicted to football when okay. I was pregnant. So then I was like, after Harrison was born, I still sure. watched a lot of football. And that's one of the things that like Nils and I actually connected on. Like when okay. we did talk about our whole pregnancy, it was always about And he's football. the English guy that loves American football? Yeah, he that's loves American awesome. football. He also yeah. loves English football too. Oh yeah, he's well, a that's that's Chelsea born. That, fan, you know? yeah, well, that's that's yeah. born. Yeah. yeah, but um, but yeah. So, um, I was like, cool. Uh, why are you texting me? And he was like, because that at that time that was the longest we'd actually gone without talking from the time I was about eight months pregnant. So after I was eight months pregnant, we were in constant communication. Right. right. Even though there was nothing romantic going on. But he was. There, but he was there for you. Yes. Yeah. Um. So then it had been like a week and a half, and I hadn't spoken to him or whatever. And he's like, not much, just seeing how you're doing. Right. And I was like, oh, I thought maybe you were texting me to wish me happy birthday. He goes, oh, shit. I was <laughs> like, yeah, that was yesterday, thanks. Right. And then I was like, wow, this is terrible. And he's like, oh, yeah. So the conversation continued. And then I think it was like an hour into the conversation. He was like, you want to come over? And I was like, for what? Right. And he was like, yeah, just to talk. So then I had to ask my mom and my dad, like, am I allowed to? <laughs> like, will you allow me to go speak to this person? Right. And they were like, Okay, but just be smart, you know, and uh, stick to your guns and don't let him tell you any shit. Right. And it was like, I went over there and it was like, we had a really great talk and he was like, I don't know if I can do this. And I was like, right. Right. We've been we know, through we know, this. We know that, yeah. And he's like, but I'm willing to try. And I was like, okay, well, I need to be willing to try again. Right. So it took about... That's good. That's you taking the shots and making your stand. Yeah, because saying, it's right. like a lot to street. deal with emotionally. And also, like, it's not about me anymore. I lived right. my whole life being so effing selfish about everything. But you're right there. So, it's, so again, and mothers know that right away. Right away. It's not about... It's, and, but it, for dudes, it unless you're... Up. It takes a little bit. because then yeah. now, And I'm sure that after a little bit, he picked it up pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But no, I've, I'd always been told that. You yeah. Know? They always say, like, a mother is a mother from the time that she yep. can feel her baby. Yep. But a father's a father by the time he sees his child. Yeah. And it was like clockwork, you know? We went to that first appointment. Right. And then it was like a week later. He was like, fuck. It seems like it almost now, from every time, I, it seems like your relationship is like the strongest it's ever been. Yeah. Because you, cause you both did come together and kind of connect. If we didn't have Harrison, yeah. we would not be together. I truly believe that. Right. Because the way our relationship was going... It wasn't. It wasn't heading anywhere serious. Right. right. You know? well, this, this, this is pretty serious. Yeah. This forced. This forced, forced us it. to deal with the things in our relationship right. because it was not about us anymore. Right. So, like, how do we? Because we fought constantly. Right. How do we not fight anymore? And what kind of decisions and sacrifices do we have to make in our own personal lives? And what habits do we yeah. have to give up? And things like that to like make this relationship work. And now you guys. So I guess it brings to the next question: mm -hmm. marriage in the future here or what? 
I mean, I hope so. Right. I hope so. But like, my mom's on our ass all the time, you know? About it at this point. Yeah. I you think guys have been together now. Now we've been together. Well, we got back together after Harrison was born. Right. And like, it's it was been like, a few, what, two, three years now? It was a few months now? after that, yeah. obviously, when we decided to actually make this official sure, again. Sure, sure. But yeah, now Harrison's almost two and a half. Crazy. Crazy. I know Crazy. it's awful. It makes me nauseous to think it's, about it. I know. They're growing up quick. But I mean, we established all that. Now, you, so you guys now, I like the story that we just told. From We, we, we literally have m- met Nils, found out how you guys met. Yeah. We have gone through the trials and tribulations of your relationship right. up until that the big the biggest event in your life mm-hmm. and how you dealt with that and then ultimately how it it's a it's it's for the, for this part of where we are right now it's a happy ending to the story we started telling. Yeah. Um and with a lot of story left to tell. Right. Um okay so then what we haven't really talked much about is is your career mm-hmm. because your career started like you started as an actress mm-hmm. and that was an end for those who didn't see the Schmodown spectacular last year you're an incredible singer. <laughs> you're and again hard on yourself which is ridiculous. You crushed it. My brother who is a big Schmodown fan is like I didn't realize she could sing that. <laughs> like so if if you have not watched go to the Schmodown spectacular this year and watch her. It was great. I didn't think it was why did you see? Why, why do you beat yourself up? I, I mean, understand they, that. I've, I've been singing my whole life. That's but, how I started, really. I know. And before I was even acting, I was singing. And how old? Um, what? I think the first time I was recognized for singing and people made a big deal out of it, I was like seven or eight years You're old. You're seven or eight years old. When you yeah, we did like a talent show in our classroom, and I was okay. in third grade. So yeah, eight maybe. And so because that like natural talent comes out, and do your ta- do my your teacher flipped and tells your parents she needs to be singing. She not like she was like what like it's crazy, and I sang um, Little Mermaid. Okay, <laughs> and she walked me around. She took my hand, and she's like, "Everybody stand up," because we'd literally. Which song did you sing? Uh, Part of your world. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? But I was like eight, right? You know, right. and like we, I put together a whole production because that was always the type of person I was. Like it's I definitely show. was meant to be in this business right. because like I had a flounder right. and I had a witch right, 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 and like right, we had right. a week to prepare, so like everyone had to come over to my house. At eight years old, <laughs> amazing. Okay, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, now you stand up there, right. and you stand up there. You're directing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My sister and I used to put on shows all the time, okay. though. You know, make my parents like sit down and watch us. And Kelly's older, yes. Yeah, Kelly's older. How many? How many Four years? years? Four years older. Okay, and you guys just you guys have been. To get, like like frickin' fracks into you know, yeah I mean like we didn't get along for a lot of a lot of our lives like as how teenagers long? Oh, like we were teenagers. always we were always sisters we always like hung out and had a good time so together. she's seventeen you're thirteen and and, and yeah like, and she was like crazy in high school and I was like me 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 what's crazy <sighs> like. <laughs> she's crazy like she got into a, she got up to a lot of shit in high school I mean we both did don't get me wrong uh-huh. but I want to interview she's her kind of, I know she's yeah. kind of a party animal in high school a little okay. bit and I just we didn't connect different I philosophies was yeah well, I was young okay and I didn't understand her life and her okay. lifestyle you know um but is she religious yes she is okay mm-hmm. okay and so like once I got older and we started having things to like talk about and connect and we'd be like realize how similar once I was like 17 18 and going through things and fucking up in my own ways sure. then I you had understood to her more. talk to right yeah. you understood yeah. her more because you got on her wavelength exactly four years later or yeah exactly. Okay. Right, exactly right 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 okay so and she links in a lot to your to your career yeah well she is like the keeper of it yeah she manages my day-to-day work yep um and all of, most of like my big collaborations with brands like social stuff she, she manages all, all my contracts right. any jobs auditions she does everything right okay. i have an agent too that i do theatrical stuff with right but kelly's well, to the point where she sends me theatrically as well what's the focus is the focus right now because you went so you went from because like you said we we, we discovered very early that you can sing mm-hmm. um and then you you start acting you did a nickelodeon show yeah yeah uh, that like so the whole singing thing turned into like musical theater when as i got older like to be into like my teenage mm-hmm. years i played a lot of sports i was playing soccer for about eight years okay and i got offered a spot on a traveling team wow. team chicago okay um which is a really big i don't know if they're still called that but it's really big okay. in illinois and um, I was so good at soccer. It's like the really? one thing I really miss. And oh yeah. How come you don't play? I mean, you can't. You can't play. You can, st- you can still play now if you yeah, want. Yeah, I mean, to. like I I long for the days mm-hmm. that like Harrison. He has like a foot disability, and that oh. really scares me, right? Because I want him to be able to play sports, right? And I want to coach his soccer team like so bad. Okay. Um, but I, ultimately, my dad made me decide between soccer and. Uh, musical theater and so I he always wanted thought, you to focus on one thing yeah and he was just right. like you're not gonna be able to do both right like, you're not because like t- like being on team Chicago meant that I would be and like traveling the, yeah and like right. the girls that like played 
traveling soccer at that time, like all went on to play. Um, my best friend at the time, she now is a professional soccer player, like oh, wow. on the the national team. Look at that. It's insane. Right. So, but, but that wasn't, that was again, very similar to this whole conversation. That wasn't the path that you no, wanted or no. you wanted to choose. So you, yeah. so then you go, you're doing acting, you're mm-hmm. doing, you're, you're singing. So you get out to, cause, and again, like I said, we need another hour, but like <laughs> you're, so because I want to, I want to learn all about what South, yeah. South African life was, but you, but when you come to LA from yeah. Chicago, how old are you? 19. You're 19 years old and Kelly's already out here. No, we moved together. We moved together. Yeah, okay, so I, I just decided I didn't want to go to school. So my parents were giving me all these like application fee monies yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And I was like doing all these applications to schools. And I was like in the back of my head knowing right. I knew I was not going to go to college. Did Kelly go to college? Uh, she went to one year okay. um, downtown Chicago for vocal performance. Okay. Kelly's actually a much better singer than I am. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. She's incredible. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, so she's incredible. So she actually went for vocal performance. And then she was like, oh, this is awful. She moved back home. Okay. Then we both went to community college for one year. Okay. So, like, the idea was, like, she got her associates, actually. She knocked it out. Like, it was insane. She right. worked her ass off. She's a hard worker. Yeah, yeah, she is. And that whole year before I left, I raised, which which is insane. I saved, I raised, I saved up, like, $6,000 right. as a 19-year-old working, like, four jobs. Wow. I, I refed soccer. I coached gymnastics. I worked at a restaurant, like, right. just to, so I could come out here. So the goal was... Mm-hmm. And my parents were always super supportive. They were just like, are you sure? Who comes up with the idea to move to L.A.? You or Kelly? I think Kelly did. Kelly did. And you Kelly said, was like, I'm over this. Are you yeah. over this? And, and I was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I, we live in Naperville, Illinois, right. where nothing happens and everybody's in your business. And it was terrible. Like, right. I didn't, I didn't, I felt like life was so much bigger than that. So you wanted, so then you guys did it. You moved yeah, out. moved at, out here. You moved out at 19. 19. I didn't work for a year. It was miserable. Okay. I almost went back. You meet the old boyfriend. Yes. You know, all that yes. stuff happens. Yep. And then towards the end of our relationship is when I booked uh, Big Time Rush. So I was still dating my ex when I ended up booking Big Time Rush. Right. Okay. Which is the, which is the Nickelodeon the, the show. The Ni- Nickelodeon show. It was fantastic. It was okay. exactly what I needed at that time because I was pretty sure I'd failed. Okay. And then I didn't work again. It was awful. Right. But you got that. And then what, at what point does, because Kelly starts working as a manager. And yes. Kelly, Kelly's working uh, for, my, for my manager. And uh-huh. so she starts to um, say to you, hey, you should try this hosting thing? Yeah. Is, that's is literally how it came up. Right. She was interning at CMEG okay. at that time. And that's really the first time I came to know you guys. Yeah. Um, and she was like showing us like some of the different, she was showing me some of the different people and she, you guys were one of the first people that she showed me. Mark because, and myself. Yeah, because yeah. in my head, hosting was always like, hello and welcome. We are here today, right. live, outside. And I was just like, right. fuck no, you cannot pay me all the money in the world right. to stand there looking like a jabroni, right. standing outside talking about shit I don't care about. Right. And then she started showing me like things like you guys were doing in the schmoes at that time. Mm-hmm. And she's like, this is what I mean. Like, it's more about being a personality than a host. Like, See, that's what we're doing. Ella, Ellis and I uh, inspiring the youth since uh, 2013. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. Um, but yeah, so that's how it started. And then I met Marky. Um, and then Marky was like, come take the boot camp on the house. Right. And Marky Costello is a, is a manager, my manager, who's mm-hmm. been, who has been in this business for a very long time yes. and does exactly what Sinead was saying. She has like these seminars that she does as far as hosting and become a hostess with is her brand. Yeah. And that's ultimately, again, I was teaching classes over there for a little yeah. bit. And then that's how you and I had met. Mm-hmm. And so, and I think that that's what you, that's how you introduce yourself is that I'm Kelly's yeah. sister. Yeah. And, and then you get into this thing and you, and you start to realize I like this. Yeah, I think it was like crazy because acting, you go to 100 auditions mm-hmm. and you book. So I did two acting things. I did Big Time Rush and then a show called My Crazy Roommate. Right. And I had done a bunch of like short films and things like that. And like really great stuff too, but nothing at the level of being on Nickelodeon. Right. Which is always what like I wanted to do. Sure. Um, and then I started hosting and I couldn't not book. Right. And that is like such a... It's such a weird feeling. Like you start booking everything. I booked every right. single audition, and it's not. I don't. I'm not even saying that to toot my own own horn. I'm saying that because it's the truth. Right. It was like a difference, but it was like this skill that you didn't realize that you had, right. and you didn't realize, like you said, you had this one particular vision of what hosting yeah. was, and yeah. then when you realize that you could kind of show these skills that you did have, because mm-hmm. I remember when you started on Movie Talk, like like any other thing, it was it was let me get the hang of this. Like the natural yeah. ability was there, but there were stumbles and there were things. Oh yeah, too, I, yeah, I was very uncomfortable about right. the idea of talking to a camera. It was very weird right. I I was always good at like live stuff and I knew I was good at like live events and stuff because I had been working at Victoria's Secret and okay. they wanted to make an announcement on, on a contest they were having they had like a special event at that Victoria's Secret at the Grove sure. and I was working for Victoria's Secret and nobody wanted to make the announcement on the, on the microphone right. 
And my manager came up to me and she was like, do you have a good voice? Like, can you speak? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. Right. She's like, you're an actress, right? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, I just need people to know that there's a contest, like whatever. And I got on the mic and I was like, hey, everybody, welcome, blah, blah. And then like walked around and like started talking to people and like making all these comments right. and like kind of engaging. And my manager was like, you're not allowed to leave that microphone for the rest of the night. And mm. then the next day, like, a natural fit. Yeah. The next yeah. day, like offered me like a $4 raise. Oh, it was insane. That's cool. Yeah. It was yeah. insane. And it was just like in the back of my head, I always had like, wow, that was like really fun. Right. But I'd never thought that that was the same thing as hosting. Right. You know? Right. And then you kind of learn more like on, on the fly. And so you, you, you do that, you do AMC movie talk. What's your, what's your first, like, when you get into this space, because AMC had, and and credit to John Campia to, to kind of building up movie talk and mm-hmm. and really getting it off the ground there, is establishing that um, that feel. But there's all these personalities there, and I know that you love movies and that your brother and you right. watch movies. But like when you walk into that space, at first it's like a job, but then you kind of, it, it overtakes your kind of persona because you got to start like you you want to talk movies, you want to know what you're talking about, and when you see these people. What are your impressions of these people when you walk in and movie talk the first thing? Like, do you remember your first day? Like, you see Schnepp. Schnepp's like a character all on himself. Like, yeah. do you get to know these people right away? Do you do you just hear you? I can- think I was I was so like out of my element. Yeah, you know, and so in my head. Um, it's funny because like I watch like old movie talk stuff and I'm like, whoa, like it's so weird to see because I can tell when I'm uncomfortable. Right. And it took a while there. I remember um, Campy and I still talked about it too. And he was like, you seem uncomfortable. And this was like maybe a, a couple weeks in. Right. He's like, you seem uncomfortable. I was like, I know. And I was like mispronouncing things all the time, stumbling over words that I should know how to pronounce. And it was nerves, you think? Oh, yeah. And I yeah. think it was just a lack of... of uh, uh, Reps? What? Rep- repetition? Yeah, and just like confidence right. because I, I really didn't know what I was doing. Right. It was the first time I'd and ever heard it. And it's live and you have people t- saying stuff to you on the, yeah. online. Yeah. It's like, and who's it the weird. new girl? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very weird. Right. Like talking into a camera it was so bizarre to me. When does the change happen? When do, you, when do you start to say, okay, I'm comfortable now, I'm ready to go, this is nothing, and, and now I'm on to the next thing? It was probably a few months in, but like when we moved over, From when AMC, AMC moved Collider, over to yeah. here, um, that was a huge, I think, I think once we were in this space, I was like, I could do this in my sleep. More comfortable, yeah. yeah. And that's really like when the love of movies took off because when I started doing this, yeah, I liked movies and I liked TV, but I was not knowledgeable the way that you guys are knowledgeable, like at that time, definitely not. Do you pay attention to like what people are saying on like who, who, which panelists are you looking at going, I like their take. I want to talk. I want to listen to what they're saying and understand a little bit more. And do you learn from it? Because like you said, you learn from a lot of things in your life, paying attention to in scenarios. Were you doing the same for movie talk or not as much? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Especially because it was, I was talking about things that I didn't really know about, right. but in the beginning, um, you didn't have to know about it. Right. You know, that host job at AMC it was just reading the news, was reading the news. Right. You right. didn't really have a take, but I, the, the reason I started realizing that I was, starting to like this is because in my head I was answering the questions That's as cool. I was answering them right. or as, as I was asking you guys and you, somebody, some people would say things and I'd be like, eh, I don't agree with that. Right. Or like, Oh my God. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So your knowledge was, I was wish I could have said my answer right. out loud. Right. Right. right but right, yeah, right. there was so many times where I started getting like defensive about certain sure. things. You know, I would hear people say different things about different celebrities and or movies and I would just be like they're so wrong they're right. so wrong right. right now everything they're saying is wrong and I would just be sitting there sure. having a conversation in my head you know whose takes did you disagree with and whose takes did you normally were you on the same page with back in the day back in the day um because if you stood there and you heard a take and you were like like you said a lot of the times you're like no, 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 no. Who do you think you would be going after the no, no, no with or if someone else said something and then you listen you went you know what? I actually agree with that because. I mean, I disagreed with Campia a lot. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think I disagreed with him a lot. Um, and then I think I agreed the most. God, it's so hard to even remember. Yeah. I think I don't really, I think I agreed with most with most things, but I do remember a, a, a lot of the time disagreeing with Campia. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Just also because I think one of the reasons, too, that... It's still to this day, I still get crap for it, right? Sure. I'll randomly come on Movie Talk and be like, why is Sinead on Movie Talk? She doesn't know anything about movies. And it's funny to me because it's wrong. Right. But like, aside from that, it's Does also Does that still happen now? Sometimes. Okay. But it's, it's rare, but sometimes. Because you've switched over to more panelists now when you're on Movie right, Talk. Right, right. Yeah. 
But the thing is like, um, I, my opinions too are, are not that critical. Right. Because um, I think it's important to have that opinion. And I, that is my opinion. Sure. I don't, I don't, I can't get critical. In you my don't want to dissect as much. You just want to kind right, of. And I also think that there's something beautiful about um, going into a movie and not dissecting it. So I always try to approach the, the way I critique movies from that perspective sure. as well. And then I get into critical stuff. Right. But I, sometimes it's really important. And that's a space that we're in. But one of my biggest pet peeves is when um, people let critics get to them. You know, right, and like right. also it's you're right. Like I could sit here and talk about how The Shape of Water is an absolute mess of a movie. I, I hated that. movie. Did you really? Yeah, I okay. hated it. Wow. But also like if somebody went and saw it and they enjoyed it, it is what it is. I'll Subjective. tell you what I also yeah. like about it. Right. For me, Campio is always it was very like this movie sucks and this is why. And most of the time I can find a good in a movie as right. well as a bad or this movie is fantastic and this is why. Sure. And so I'm, I am critical, but in my own way. Sure. I mean, and, and that just goes back to the fact that how subjective movies are right. in general. Exactly. Um, and before we let you go, because one of the things I want to explore a little bit more is with Clever, because Clever has defined your career a yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, as where Instagram is something that is absolutely defining your career. Clever, you got while working at Collider also. Mm -hmm. I took the job at Clever and I was about five months pregnant. Okay. Um, and they, was, did they know? Uh, when you got the, no. they didn't know. You didn't no. tell anybody. I didn't okay. tell my producer until I was about seven months, around the time that I told you guys, right. or told Campia at that time, and okay. Wendy and Dennis. Campia, Wendy, and Dennis. I told. They right knew off right the away. Bat. Okay. Well, I didn't tell them right off the bat. I told them when I was like seven. When and you half. were when you were ready to talk. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I told everybody around the same time, my producer wise, but yeah, most of my co-hosts and stuff didn't know until the day that I left for maternity okay. leave. Okay. Literally, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be gone till February. Right. And they were like, why? What's going on? And I was like, I'm pregnant. And they're like, no, you're not. And right. I like lifted up my shirt and they were like, what the hell? Right. Like, what is happening? It was like a happening? magic trick. Yeah, it was a magic <laughs> trick. So we're always like, it's so funny because one of my co-hosts, right. my producer says, when you first got hired, I used to think like, oh my God, Sinead has such like cute boho style. She always be like, I'm so inspired by Sinead's boho style. You were always wearing like these flowy. Right, and right, then I right. come back from having hair soon, it's all crop tops. Right. Which is like my uniform. Constantly, I'm always wearing crop tops and graphic t-shirts right. and jeans, you know? And when I was there, I was like, never wear jeans because like your jeans don't fit. Right. You always wear, I was always wearing like long dresses is looking like I don't know like you're hiding it yeah or yeah, like yeah, yeah, I was yeah. ready for Coachella at right, all right, times right, of life right, you know right right so but yeah okay. so that was really I started doing clever they brought me on um to do a lot of the movie stuff so I did clever movies right and then I really did the majority of that movie stuff me and Aaron Robinson yes. over there so the two of us really handled the movie channel and then the movie channel then got taken over by Screen, screen junkies. junkies. Right. So now Clever doesn't do... Does that affect do, your job when that happens? Oh, it was scary at the time okay. because I really, I loved Clever movies. Sure. I really did. Um, but, and I knew I wasn't going to get as much opportunity to do movie news. Right. But if it's big enough, we still cover it and right. I still do junkets and carpets and things like that. Okay. So what do you do? What's the majority of stuff that you're doing over at Clever now? Now I do, it's pretty even actually now between doing news mm -hmm. and then doing a lot of their personality stuff. Okay. Um, so it's like we have Interviews a bunch of one-off shows. Too. Well, like we have one-off shows like Cheat Day. Okay. Um, where we like eat weird stuff. Right, and right. then the Get Jacked, which is a workout show. Yeah, yeah. And that's all shot like like t like a TV show. Right. So I do a lot of their personality stuff, which is nice because it's almost like I've gone kind of back to like a little bit more of the acting side of things, yes. you know? So you get to do, yeah, you get to explore. Well, yeah. yeah. So the majority of stuff that you're really, are you still exploring scene? It's like it's like one of those things I don't think I would ever want to do professionally, yeah. unless it, I was doing it as well as doing some of this other stuff. Right. Like I, don't, I wouldn't want to just do music. Okay. Um, so what's what's the goal for the next next year? I what, wish I could tell you. What do you want to do? People always ask me this. I just what do you had want a, to do? I just had this meeting like yeah. about a week and a half ago, and they're like, "Where do you see yourself in five years?" I said, "Where do you see yourself in the next eight months?" What yeah. do you, What do you what, what like if you could work in a clever, obviously doing more stuff, uh -huh. getting your getting your name out there, building the reputation. Right. Um, you, you know, not personal stuff. Obviously, the, the, the first and I know the answer to this. The first priority is is your son. Yeah. But going straight ahead, mm -hmm. saying this is what I want to accomplish in the next year. What do you want to do? Well, I have some things in the works right now that I can't say out loud yet. Okay. But um, they're they seem promising. But then again, like I'm very very negative when it comes to this. Not so negative. Cautious. Skeptical. Yes, skeptical. Yes. I don't believe anything until I've signed a piece of paper. Understood. That's smart. But um, I would really love to be manning my own show somewhere. Got it. Okay. Well, that's okay. fair. So yeah. I, I feel like that could very well happen right. very soon, um, or at least 
some sort of segment or something that's just all my own, right. you know? Um, and in a way that's kind of like right up my alley, which is why I'm really excited about some of the things that are going on in my life right now, because I feel like if some of these opportunities might really allow me to be shooting shit. Right. And that's the, that's how I choose to host forever. <laughs> so you should name the show shooting shit, shooting shit with Sinead. <laughs> I've been not like some, for some reason, making me really nervous, but yeah. like all of a sudden I've been like not able to say S H sounds. Okay. Why? I don't know. Right. It's stressing me go, out. Now go away. Everything stresses you out. You gotta I stop know, this. I know, but it's true. Cause I, I'm like, Oh my God, like, yeah. why am I talking like this? It'll but go. shooting shit with shit. Shooting shit. That's, well, yeah. that's tricky. That's three, that's three S words. I know. All but right. yeah, so that's kind of like where I'm at right now. Um, and like, just it's just like a lot of things keep happening. You know, I worked at E this for the yeah. first three months of yeah, the year. Yeah. You're going to a lot of these awards things now. You're yeah, sending a lot of events. Yeah, and, and like covering just random things and right. doing a lot of events and awards and, and parties and like yeah. just being a personality. Living life. But it's great. I just, you, it's one of those things like when you are a freelance yeah, host it's yeah. great when you're working it's awful when you're not so i'm very grateful to be working um but the reason i started doing a bunch of the instagram stuff and things like that was because i was i needed to supplement my current income sure it's just kind of taken on a life of its own listen i was right in in wanting to talk to you and being fascinated by you i have so there's so much there's so much more to talk there's about so weird there's so much to talk about <laughs> um and we can't because now we have to now we've, we've been here for an hour and 15 minutes I know. and i don't want to keep you too much longer but this will not be the last time that you and i sit down because there's going to be more stuff we're going to talk about when you can talk about shooting show with Sinead. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about South Africa. Yeah, there's so much to talk yeah, about. Yeah, I want to talk about all this. I want to talk about when you traveled to South Africa again with Aaron. Um, mm -hmm. I want to talk about all these things. I want to talk about more fights with your sister. Um, all these things I want to talk about. I know, about we them. haven't even gotten into like the juice That's what stuff. I'm saying. So I, I want to do more <laughs> stuff here. But thank you so much for sitting down with me of today. Of course. I was telling Christian, I've never been on a podcast where i had to wear headphones before did you like it i feel very a fish good did you, you know did you was hopefully i made it nice and comfortable for you yeah super comfortable good i just don't like the whole podcast thing is like a very 2018 thing you know yeah so it's kind of cool to see like everybody well, it's made a resurgence yeah it's made a resurgence and like I, there's a podcast i listen to i listen to the woody show which is a radio yeah, show, but, woody show yeah. right yeah. i'm upset yeah. But I listen to that every single day, and um, I love the idea of listening to like real conversations. And that's what this is. That's what we're going to continue to do here. And who better to start like with the inside of the crew than one of the most real people that I know, Sinead DeFries. And make sure you check her out. Where can I find you on Twitter? Um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Sinead DeFries. And then I have a blog at that, so Sinead. Oh, nice blog okay. um that's just like everything you see on instagram with just a little bit more of an explanation and then yeah you can find me occasionally here you can find me occasionally at over on clever um, you're everywhere then, i'm everywhere and yeah. then hopefully hopefully i'll get to make some more announcements soon that that i feel like people will really enjoy good well you're missed here and you'll be on here more like uh, one of like i said having you back on on movie talk as a panelist i think is a, is a great call and, and and to mark ellis's credit for for sure um to get your opinions out there more mm -hmm. um and we're going to be doing that and for you guys if you're watching on youtube obviously you you leave your comments and and the likes and all that but itunes is very important itunes is where you guys subscribe to apple's po apple podcast subscribe uh, go on over to the podcast one app and one-on-one -on -one with christian harloff you want more guests like Mr. Freeze and other people so we can keep shooting the shit um, don't worry she's copyrighted that so I can't use that again <laughs> um, thanks again guys really it was a pleasure talking to Sinead hope you guys enjoyed and we'll talk to you next time that was it. That was the interview. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're joining us for the first time on Collider Video, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, do all that stuff. And remember, this is also on iTunes. If you're listening to iTunes right now, pull over and then rate it, subscribe it, do all that stuff. Hit pause on the treadmill for a second and let us know what you think about these shows. And we will continue to make more of them. You can find all your favorite shows from Collider on iTunes on the Collider Podcast Network. Thank you very much. See you next time.